Min.io is a masterclass in Docker Compose. Um, some of the engineers behind this open source project are just doing things I have never seen before in Docker files and Docker Compose and that kind of configuration. You know, a lot of the complex orchestration gets put to Kubernetes where very simple, quick tests go to Docker. Um, I've used Kubernetes, I've used Docker, I use a lot more Docker, so it's kind of just much easier for me to like kind of build things and test things and run them locally on my network using Docker Compose. So that's kind of what I opted for when I decided to add this to my network for an application I'm writing. So I kind of want to show exactly what's going on here. Uh, it's just a little test bucket I have for an application I'm working on. So we can browse it and it's actually really cool. Uh, it stores blob objects, so it's blob storage or binary large objects. Um, usually for applications, so I'm personally using this to store um, just like primarily pictures because um, storing that in a database gets kind of messy, so you want to move to something like MinIO or MinIO is also very similar. It's like an S3 bucket if you're familiar with AWS. But yeah, so it's just a place where I'm kind of storing some test images, seeing how everything's working. I'm using TypeScript and Node on the back end to like kind of deploy these and test everything. And when I was actually going to add this to my network um, to kind of get that DevOps configuration going for it, which is, you know, my jam, I was amazed um, by the Docker Compose. So that's just a brief intro. Again, it's just like a, a local version of like an S3 bucket or any kind of blob storage. It's on Google Cloud. It's on Azure. It's on Amazon. They all kind of have their own proprietary solutions. But MinIO is going to be that open source uh, public one. Of course, you can run in the cloud. But the benefit is you don't have to and you don't have to pay for it. You can just kind of throw it on whatever server you're kind of having in your house, whether it's like a spare laptop or what have you. So let's actually look at the Docker Compose file here, right? So I'll pull this over here. Um, we're just going to kind of walk through this and see exactly what they're doing. Um, first off, uh, this probably isn't the most important thing, but you're going to see they're using Quay.io. Um, I've actually really come around using Quay.io a good bit. So it's, um, I believe it's by Oracle or Red Hat, but don't quote me on that. And it takes regular Docker Hub images and puts them through a gauntlet of tests to make sure it's more secure and it's ready to go. So I've actually really come around using Quay.io and I think it's a really smart move. Um, and then, so it's got a few other things you might have just not seen in a Docker Compose. It's got your default stuff here, like which ports you want to expose. Um, it's gonna have host names, volumes, nothing crazy going on here. But what's really cool is how they configure these min.io's. So you're going to see they actually distribute the min.io client into a cluster of four different servers here, or containers, excuse me, but four different containers. So min.io 1, 2, 3, and 4. And what they're doing is just something I've never seen before. So we've got this uh, like double open bracket. Um, and what it does is it allows us to grab predefined data in the YAML file. So if we go up here, we're going to see that ampersand min.io is gonna match that. They use an asterisk to show that that's what they're pulling into. Um, so since we have four containers all doing the same thing relatively, um, what we can do is we can predefine what they're going to do ahead of time so we don't have to write, let's see this is only 75 lines. If we actually added all of this manually, it'd be probably 150 and maybe 130. And then of course it'd be more error prone because typing something out four times, you're more likely to make a mistake than if you type it out once and just verify it, right? So what they're able to do is just kind of hook into all of these. And not only that, but they're able to add some specific commands. So depending on which image you're on, depends on exactly what the um, server at console address is going to be, which is really cool. Um, and then also something I've just never seen done um, in the Docker Compose is the health check. So you can do a health check in a Docker file, actually, um, which is why sometimes, like I know the Minecraft image by default and a few others are going to automatically tell you if it's healthy or if it's not healthy, right? Where most of the time it just says up or down. So they actually bake into the Docker Compose here the health check instead of doc, uh, putting it into the Docker file. Uh, it's just a different way of doing it, but it's really nice because you can start to uh, use this in your own scripts. So. Um, I personally modified this to be every two minutes for me, um, but it really just depends on what you want. Um, but it allows you to get just a little bit more customization and you can start using tools like curl or even like for my Node.js um, container I'm using, it's running Node on Alpine, so it doesn't actually have curl built into it. So what we can do instead is just use Node and write a JavaScript application to do the health check for us. So it's really neat seeing how they're doing this health check. 
Um, it's again, just a really advanced way of doing things. These guys have a really strong grip on how their Docker works and just how to properly configure things. And then on top of that, they're doing volumes, I think, the right way. So they can predefine the volumes here. And then what we can do is you're going to notice the volumes are down here. Because of this, we can actually add our own custom driver configurations without um, having to modify inline. We can just kind of do it at the end of the file, which I think is really nice. So let me see if I can pull up my own here. I'm probably going to grab the wrong one, aren't I? Yep, there we go. All right, so you'll notice in my own, uh, actually that one's not marked, it's the other one. But in my own, I've predefined where I want this to be. So I'm setting the driver, the local driver. It's the default driver, but it's good to know. Then you can set some driver options as well. So for me, the important one was, was setting the device and where I want that data to actually be stored. Um, you can, of course, do this in line, but I just think it's a really nice uh, and integrated way of doing it. Of course, it makes it a bit more verbose when you're actually looking at the volumes log, but it also helps separate things and kind of clean the code up, in my opinion, because you've got the containers, you've got the network, and then you've got your volumes. Instead of having all of it in one with your binds and everything, and it gets really messy. So I think it's a really interesting way of doing it. It's not something I see too much. Um, I think a lot of people, again, are looking for that really quick and dirty solution. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is actually built into um, an application I'm using right now, or I'm building right now. Uh, you can see it's commented out because it's still kind of in pre-production, and I don't really want to add five different containers to do that. But the other smart thing they did, which I really think we should take a, a look at, is their Nginx. So because they're creating a cluster here of four different MinIO containers, to make it really easy to access those, they actually put it behind an Nginx reverse proxy. So what that allows us to do here is we're actually not exposing any ports. Everything's just connected through the same network. Um, and that we can then take that and just actually create an nginx.comp file and serve everything based on its location and how nginx believes it should be configured, which of course is just predefined. So if we go back a directory, uh, we can see the nginx.comp here. And you can see we're calling the servers by the names we just defined in the host name for the Docker Compose. So all of them are gonna be running on the same ports. So we've got your min.io and your console. So if we need console access, it's gonna to know to go here. And if you want the actual server access, we're gonna go here. So it's just really interesting. Uh, this isn't a crazy long video or anything, but I definitely recommend giving a look at min.io. And if you are interested in blob storage, um, I think it's a really beneficial skill to have. I don't think it's that complicated to learn. Uh, this is a really great way to test it on your home, own home network, or if you have Docker running on your desktop, you could easily throw it on there. So hopefully you learned something. I sure did. Uh, see you guys in the next one. Thank you.